Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight, the 3rd of November, 2023, Susan Parsons is, is going to show us another way to tie a stimulator. Seems to drive the fish crazy in her part of the world. And then she's going to talk about teasing and waiting. Both have to do with fly fishing only, only in fly fishing. Anyway, good evening. We're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And our presenter tonight and joining us is Susan Ad, Susan Parsons. Now, let me, let me tell you about Susan. Okay, Susan Parsons lives in Lakeview, Arkansas, where she and husband Steve fish the North Fork and White Rivers regularly. Relatively new to fly fishing world, she has been tying flies for about 12 years. She has won the Sawbug Roundup tying competition multiple times and has earned the FFI Bronze and Silver Tying Skills Awards. Good girl. I am I like that. <laughs> Susan most enjoys creative time at the Vice and tying practical patterns for catching fish and sharing with anglers she meets on the stream. Tonight, Susan, tell us all about it. Well, tonight I'm going to show you a different way of tying a stimulator. I um, was often frustrated by the fact that stimulators didn't float very well when I wanted them to. And this became especially true when we moved down here to um, the mountain home area and we're often fishing from a boat and using a stimulator as um, the hopper of a hopper dropper uh, rig. And sometimes you have to move the boat very quickly to avoid um, hazards that are coming up downstream as you're drifting. And when this happened, the flies got dragged behind the, the boat and then they really sunk. So I tried to come up with some different ways to make a stimulator more buoyant. And there were a couple progressive steps that I took and, and experiments that I did. And I think I've come up with what works best for me. And I'm hoping to share um, how I do that with you today, how I put the fly together. And, and this, this method can certainly be applied to other um, patterns as well, besides stimulators, other, other dry flies. Okay, so there, there's the materials list for this. And it's really uh, kind of pretty, pretty similar to, well, basically the same as what you would use for a typical stimulator. You want to use a hopper hook. Um, you can use brown or yellow or gold or a orange thread, whichever your choice is. Um, elk or deer hair. I use elk hair on larger flies and deer hair on smaller flies. The body will have a foam strip for an underbody. And instead of dubbing, I use polypropylene yarn. And then I usually put a brown hackle on there. And I also will um, rib the hackle with gold wire to, to make it a little stronger. The wing, again, is elk or deer hair. The thorax, instead of dubbing, I'm, I'm sorry, the thorax, I do use dubbing. I use yellow, black, or um, orange, depending on the um, color of the fly that I'm tying. And for the thorax, I use a grizzly hackle, and then the head is just thread. So with that, I think we can... Um, look at, at the vise and, and see what we have here. So here we have a traditional stimulator and you can see the um, abdomen is dubbed and then it's wrapped with a, with a brown hackle. And this is a traditional stimulator. And these are the ones that I really got frustrated with because after getting bitten a couple of times by a fish or drug under the water, they just didn't float very well. So the next thing I came up with was a stimulator that was tied with, oh, let me put my light on there, much better. Um, this stimulator is tied with polypropylene yarn on the abdomen instead of dubbing. And that was an improvement, but still, especially with the boat, just not as good as I wanted it to be. And the other thing that I would like you to notice is that this um, hackle is counter wrapped with wire and that is the best way to protect a hackle to counter wrap it with the wire but you'll see also that a lot of the fiber the fibers are not sticking out straight away from the from the fly and it's kind of messy and I just don't like the way it looks and I'm kind of particular about how my flies look when they're finished so I just don't like that end result so um, I'll show you another way to put the hackle on and wrap it with the wire. 
So the final version of my improved stimulator is this one here. And so this has, as you can see, this is actually a piece of foam. And this foam is, uh, is in the underbody. So I have a foam underbody and the body is wrapped with polypropylene yarn. And then the hackle is, is wrapped with wire, but it's not counter wrapped. And I'll show you how I do that you can see how much better the hackle fibers stand out away from the body of the fly, which is really what I'm after. Um, it really bothers me to use a really nice saddle uh, feather. And then when you, by the time you counter wrap it, you have kind of a mess. And it also takes a lot longer to do it that way. So let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hook in the vise and we're gonna start this as you normally would a stimulator get a couple more materials in place here okay so i'm just going to use a yellow thread this is an eight dot thread and i'm just going to go ahead and start this in the usual fashion put my magnifier on here so i can see what i'm doing a little bit better I'm going to wrap this back to between the, the barb of the hook and the, and the um, point. And I have previously smashed this barb down. So that's about where I want this to end up is about there. And then I'll come forward just a little bit, a couple wraps, and I'm going to get my um, elk hair. And I'm gonna go ahead and get off a section of that for my tail. And I don't want a real heavy tail. That fly I put up there, one of the flies I put up there, I noticed had a really heavy tail and that's not really ideal. And then to clean this, what I do is I just hold, I'm, I'm right-handed. So I hold the ends with my left hand and then I just pull the smaller fibers away. And when I do that, most of the, under fur will come out and I can just kind of fan it out and get the rest of the under fur to come out. Then I'll put those in my stacker, get them to stack. And then I'm gonna take my fibers out of the stacker in the direction in which I want to mount them. I'm gonna take a hold of them. And I like my tail, boy, that isn't perfect, but I guess we'll go with it. It's not bad. Well, I like my tail to be about as long, maybe a little bit longer as from the point to the end of the bend of the hook. So that looks about right. I don't want a real long tail on this. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and catch that relatively loosely because I don't wanna, I don't want it to flare back here and I don't want it to wrap around the hook. So I'm just gonna hold it up as I do that until I'm happy with the position and the length. And then I'll go ahead and wrap forward at first relatively loosely. And then as I go further forward, I'll tighten it down more. And I'm gonna wrap this to my thorax abdominal junction. So we have about two thirds of the fly occupied by the abdomen and a third of occupied by the thorax. The standard measurements for our bugs. And then I just trim off that excess. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back and make sure this is nice and tightly bound down to my fly. And I'm gonna go right back to the back. I ended up with quite a few wraps back there, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna come forward about halfway and find the piece of wire that I previously cut. So this is an extra fine wire. Uh, this one's gold. You can use whatever color you like. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a kink in there where that is nice and clear, isn't it? So that it makes it easier to tie that in without it slipping back as I go to the back. And I'm gonna wrap this wire so that it ends up in the bottom of the fly so that when I wrap the wire around later, it won't interfere with my hackle. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in my hackle. This is a nice 
um, saddle hackle. This actually is off of a, well, that looks pretty long. Go up further on this. This is a off of a brown hackle, but it's really kind of almost a furnace color. And this is sized a little bit shorter than the width of the, the gape of the hook, because when I make my underbody, it makes the whole fly fatter and I don't want my hackle to be real long. So, and the other thing that I do is instead of stripping the stem of the feather, I trim it because I'm pretty um, aggressive, I guess, as I, as I tie, as I wrap my feather and I don't want to um, break it. And I find that it's more likely to break if I strip it than if I trim it. So I'm going to just go ahead and tie this feather in. And you can see I've left some of this, the trimmed stem visible so that when I wrap my, my feather, it won't, it's more likely to behave itself. Although this one already looks like it's trying to misbehave. So I'm gonna back off and see if I can twist that down. Now, it looks like it's maybe gonna behave itself. There we go. Okay, so I have my tail in, I have my my wire and I have my hackle. Uh, like, video. like I normally would tying a stimulator and normally at this point you would dub the body oh. but instead of dubbing it's i'm going to use right on. some polypropylene yarn and this is just off of a card you can some people get like a big skein of it that's fine so i'm going to cut myself a piece of that but this piece of yarn is too thick it's way too thick so I want about half or maybe even a little bit less of that than that. So what I can do, and Gretchen has, has showed us this before, you can take your bodkin and you can comb this out and you have to start at one end and work your way. I usually work my, my way halfway down and then turn it around. So I've cut a section off to use. But the other thing I found at a beauty supply store is this little guy. What this is, is a, an eyebrow brush and with a comb at the other end, and I can comb it out with the comb and do the same thing, it's a little quicker. I'm gonna do it though uh, off camera on a flat surface because if you lay the, the material on the table, it's much easier to comb out. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Get this all combed out so it's easy to work with because I need to split it. So after combing it with my little comb, now I have this uh, polypropylene that I can easily split. So I can take my bodkin and just go approximately in the middle of it and split it. And now I can just peel part away from the other part. And the second part I can use for another fly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in I'm gonna come forward a bit and tie this in about where my thorax will end and my abdomen will begin and just work my way back. To about the tie-in point, maybe just a teeny bit shy of the tie-in point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come forward. Well, actually, I don't need to come forward. I can just leave that right there. I'm gonna take my comb again and just comb out any fibers that aren't cooperating. So now is the, the big change in particular from a, a traditional stimulator. So this is a piece of two inch, I'm sorry, two millimeter thick foam, closed cell foam. Um, and it was cut with a tapered Chernobyl ant cutter, which is, that's the, um, that's what was in the label. Let me back out of here a little bit. Oops, wrong way. So that's what the, the label looks like in the inside of the package it comes in. It's made by Rotor, River Road Creations here in the US. You can actually go on their website and call them and speak to a human body about their products. They have a whole bunch of different um, cutters that they make. So what the cutter looks like, for those of you who haven't seen them, this is what... A, a body cutter looks like. So it's a piece of wood that you can actually grip well. 
And then on the end, it has this metal uh, form that's basically a knife. And what you do is you put your foam always on this piece of firm rubber that they supply with it. So you would put your foam here and then you put your cutter on top and you press and kind of wiggle it and it cuts the foam to the shape of the knife. And they're really pretty handy for cutting um, bodies. So that's what this was cut with. This is a medium, which is what I would use for this fly, which is a size six hopper hook. If I were to go down to an eight, I might use this one, but I would probably use a small one. This is this piece of foam is six millimeters wide, which is about a quarter inch wide. It doesn't have to be cut. Your foam does not have to be cut with a, with a special cutter. You can take a pair, pair of scissors and cut your foam to the width you like. Um, the only thing is that the tip needs to be tapered. Other than that, it doesn't have to be cut real pretty because this is all going to be covered up. So the next step is going to be to just take this foam and we're going to put it on top of the fly so that the tip is just past the tie-in point of all, whoops, of all my other materials. About like that. You don't want it way back on the on the um, tail because it'll smash your tail down. So you just want it past there. So I'm going to go ahead and catch that the tip of that foam and make sure it stays right on top of the of the hook. And I'm going to take about three wraps there. And when I make my wraps, I try not to get right exactly in the same place. Because I don't really want to cut into that foam, but I do want to securely attach it. And again, I'm going to make sure it stays on top. Now, I'm going to go ahead and advance my thread about halfway to my thorax. The other thing I do, I'm a big fan of super glue. So I have some super glue on my desk on a piece of plastic, and it will not set up on plastic for about an hour or more. Um, so you can just leave it sitting on your desk. You just have to be careful you don't put some materials or, or an instrument on top of it. And then I applied it with a um, with a hypodermic needle. Now I'm just going to come here and, and just kind of push this in and hold it for just a couple seconds so that super glue can set up and really attach to that um, foam because I don't want it spinning around my fly. I'm just going to press it for a second. Okay, so now I have advanced about to the halfway point. I'm going to go ahead and just hold my foam and do a couple loose wraps just to keep it in place so that later on when I wrap materials over it, it won't slip. And you can see those wraps are not right on top of each other and they're fairly loose. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift the foam back up and go about to my uh, to where my thorax will begin. And now I am going to go ahead and pinch that foam down, make sure it's staying on top and do about three wraps. And again, not exactly on top of each other. I don't wanna cut into the foam. So let's check out what we've got here. Looks like we're pretty good. We're, we're wrapping around that hook, but we're not um, We're not really, uh, we're, it's staying on top. So now I can go ahead and, and cut this, but I'm not real careful about how I cut it because I'm gonna come back in here and cut off the excess. And then I can come back over with my thread and really bind that down good. And once again, I can come in here and stick a little super glue in there just to keep that from sliding around and all those attachment points. I'll put a little bit of super glue, make sure it stays put. Okay, so that's my body. Now, at this point, I can use my rotary to, to wrap this um, polypropylene, but I don't necessarily need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wrap, start wrapping the polypropylene forward. And this is in lieu of dubbing. And as I do this, I kind of shape the body, but I don't wanna squish it down because I don't want to take the air out of the foam. Otherwise, there's not much point in having the foam. So I'm just kind of giving this a pinch to shape the foam as I do it. This polypropylene is a little bit short. It could have been longer. 
Let's back this one off and maybe we can get that to come forward a little bit. There we go. And now right up here, I am definitely putting pressure on it to squish that foam down at the very front because I do want a nice taper at the front of the abdomen. I'm just going to catch my excess polypropylene and trim off. Trim off the excess. So now I have a pretty good um, abdomen, but I just want to go back and kind of in my mind and also and physically compress the foam right there so that I still have a, a clear notion of where my abdomen is going to end and my um, thorax is going to begin. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap up on this hook and I'm going to put a half hitch in here because I'm about to use my rotary to put on my hackle and my wire. Okay, so wrapping this hackle, this is this is one of my crazy things that I came up with. As I showed you that one fly was counter, the wire was count the wire was counter wrapped on the hackle. And I just don't like the way that comes out. So I devised a way of wrapping the hackle and the wire together, but still um, having the barbules extend nicely away from the body of the fly. So I'm not squashing my barbules down. And this is a you know fairly high quality feather. And I hate to see them just kind of get mangled as I counter wrap because I'm just not very good at it. Maybe if I were better at it, it'd be okay. But how I do this is I take my wire and I wrap it 360 degrees around the rachis of the feather. And then I take the, the wire and the feather together and begin to wrap them on the fly. And if I really do it well, that feather will be trapped under the wire as I wrap it. Now, when you first do that first wrap on this, you wanna make sure that the wire and feather don't push the the um the tip of the foam to the other side it will try to go a little bit and it looks like it's going doing fine here so again i'm just going to wrap these two together as a unit the, the feather and the um, wire and as you can see they're kind of embedding into the abdomen which is even better as far as protecting the fe the feather from the teeth of the fish. And at this point, I am where the abdomen will end and the thorax will begin. But I'm going to go ahead and do another wrap because that's where I want to catch the feather and wire together. And I'll trim off the excess barbels that I don't really want on my thorax after I get this caught and tied down. So now I'm catching the wire and the feather together. So I've just wrapped the feather and the wire in one unit. It's really quick. And I do find that though it isn't as strong as a counter wrapped feather, it's pretty darn good. So I just helicoptered off my wire. And now I'm just going to take off my excess um, feather. And as you can see, I have some barbules that are in the, in the territory of my thorax. So I'm just going to come in here underneath here and trim them away. But this feather is not going anywhere. It's it's tied in. So the other thing I need to do is tie, is, is trim these, like one of the wraps of barbules on the top so that when I attach my wing, it, they won't be in the way of the wing. So now I'm gonna come back to where my wing is gonna begin where it's going to be tied in where my, where my thorax begins and my and my abdomen ends. So it looks like that looks pretty good. I might trim a little bit more here just so that my wing is not disturbed, so to speak. Okay, now I just need to go back to my, my deer hair. So now I'm just getting another um, bunch of deer hair, this one bigger because it's for my wing. And I'm going to, again, clean that. I'm going to fan it out, get the underbody out of there. And the shorter fibers, and put that in my stacker. Now, let's see here. 
Okay. So the wing on this fly, I like it to be about the length of the body. And I find that if I um, put it at the body and then tie it in, it ends up being a little bit short. So I'm going to place it so that it's just past the body. And then I'm going to take a wrap around there. I find I can control it better when I'm attaching it to the fly. I did catch some of the barbells in there, but I'll probably be okay. Check my length. I like it. Keeping that on top, I'm going to go ahead and bind this down. Hopefully not break my thread. And then I'll go ahead and start wrapping through the material towards the front of the fly. And as I do that, it helps, hopefully, give me a nice tapered um, thorax. Sometimes I find if you don't really taper the thorax well on this fly, it makes it difficult to, um, to then wrap your thorax hackle on here. So I'm just going to trim off the waist and then trim it closer to the fly. Got quite a mess here. Hopefully I can fix this without without cutting my thread really did really did do a lousy job of that I definitely have to clean that up or we'll never get anywhere but it looks like it might might be a nice taper which is what I want If you just cut it off blunt, then you don't have a good taper on the front end of the fly. All right, I'm going to see if I can cheat with some thread over that mess and carry on. Looks like I might get away with it. Okay, good enough government work, as my dad would say. Now, this is my thorax feather, which is about the right length. It's a little bit shorter than my abdomen feather. And this is just a plain grizzly hackle, Sa another saddle hackle, nice long saddle hackle that's so easy to work with. And again, I just trim off my um, fibers rather than strip them, or I will surely break this feather. more than I needed to, but I may have nipped it. Okay, so, and again, I'm gonna tie this on, on the near side, leaving some of the stripped stem exposed. Oops, there we go. So that when I wrap it, it will hopefully behave itself. Trim this little guy off here. I'm gonna wrap over this mess again. There we go. Now it's looking a little better. So now I just need to dub the thorax and then we'll wrap the, the hackle. So this is just some um, dry fly dubbing. This is super fine. I'll just use a little, just make myself a nice noodle here. Looks a little sparse, so I'm going to double that up a little bit. I'm probably going to have to put more on. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and get back where we have the junction between the thorax and the abdomen. That's a little sloppy back there. There we go. I'm definitely going to need more. Uh-oh, I've still got a piece of deer hair sticking out here. Well, that's what dubbing this for is for covering up the mess. 
then your hackle on top and the fish won't even care. Can't put another half hitch in here and get it. Yeah, here we go. And then hopefully this feather will wrap nicely and not turn around backwards. There we go. Well, turned there, didn't it? You can get it track the way it should be. There we go. It should be turned so that the barbules face to the back of the fly. Okay. Let me catch that. Them off the excess. Make a nice little head. Hopefully without catching fibers I don't want to catch. Cover up that back that's sticking up. And then we're just going to go ahead and whip finish it. Oops, there we go. And I always put a little super glue on my heads. Again, applied with a hypodermic needle, I can really be very precise with how I apply it. Now, I did see some fibers caught up in that wing, so we're just going to tease them out of there. Fluff them up here and there. And that's it. Gretchen is over here clapping wildly. You beautiful job. <laughs> well, it's not it. perfect. If I, I were it. judging it for, for to send it in for my FFI uh, <laughs> um, skills award, I would look at those wraps and say those wraps are not equally dis uh, equal distant apart, but the fish won't care. Uh, I'll kind of tell you, I love the way you... Um, uh, shape that thorax with the uh, butt ends of the wing. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I took, you know, after you tie a few of these, you, you figure out what can I do? Because I was really having a hard time. It was, it would taper too quickly, you know, so I can kind of stretch the taper out with the butts of the, of the hair. I'm uh, telling you right now, that would, that would catch fish on the Yellowstone. Well, you know, the, it's it's nothing that I invented, right? I just changed it up a little so it'll float a little better. We all know these things have caught fish all over the country and all over the world, probably. As it as it turns out, we've been teasing all week long about Susan Parsons doing the tease in the fashion show. Well, we're at that point now, and Susan, we're going to want you to take as long as you need for this. These uh, weekly tips. Okay, well, anyway, the weekly tip is going to be provided this week by Susan Parsons, and she'll be do, doing some teasing at the vice and some waiting tips as well. Okay, so here I have an already tied scud. And most, I have used several <clears throat> tools over the year, years, including um, gun barrel cleaning brushes and Velcro on a stick and all kinds of things to tease the dubbing out. And the Bigger tools are inflexible and sometimes hard to get in, particularly if you're using a really small, tying a really small fly. So what I found works quite nicely is you just take a piece of, of Velcro and you cut it so that you have like two or three of the uh, rows of the hook, of the hooks um, exposed. And this is about, I don't know, two and a half inches long or something. And the reason I like this is that it's much more flexible and I can just get it in there and rub it on the fly <laughs> and it really pulls out the dubbing nicely and I can do it side to side.
And it just really pulls it out such so much easier than using a stiff uh, tool. And then you can see how well that pulled the dubbing out of there. And obviously some of them are even too long. So then I can just come in with my scissors and clip them so that they're the length that you would want typically on legs. So that just works really pretty slick and it's really quick and easy. That's tip number one. Tip number two is going to require me to get dressed. I'm going to pull my waders on and uh, and show you that tip. Okay, so I've got my waders handy. Now I hopefully quickly pull them on. There we go. I made it. So now the next struggle that I have, and it's especially happened to me as I have aged. I seem to have a strap tucked in the back there, which is going to make this more interesting, is I've had a lot of shoulder issues, including replacements. And I used to be able to just do this and then shove my arm down in there. But if I have a lot of clothing on, it can really be a struggle. So instead, what I figured out is I get my waders on and I make sure I have as we always do, the correct male and female strap. And now, however, I have them both in my hands and I can't put them together without getting it over my arm and shoving my arm down in there. So what I do is I'm going, my, I'm going to attach the right side. So I'm gonna take the left strap and I'm gonna just tuck it under my armpit. Now this frees up my left hand to take a hold of the strap. And now I can just, with my right hand, I will hold the, the male part uh, or the female male part. And <laughs> the part, whoops, now I dropped it. The part that's attached to my waders, I'll hold with my right hand. With my left hand, I can just bring the strap over my shoulder and attach it. Meanwhile, this, the other strap, which I now just dropped, whoops, is under my armpit. I can reach over here and bring it over my shoulder and then attach it. So it's really just a matter of tucking the second strap under your armpit as you're getting the first strap attached. The next thing is a feature that we call sharing. And on BT sharing, uh, whoever wants in the audience can share something with us. And uh, tonight, starting with Evelyn, and Evelyn always draws things for us, and we're glad to glad of that. So, would you share that with us tonight, Evelyn? Let's That's see. apply oh, the stimulator, <laughs> Susan stimulator. How Perfect. beautiful! Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Good job. Perfect. Hi. There you go. Nice <laughs> job. Wow. Now I want to know: Did you do a drawing of her putting her waders on? No, that was that was too funny. I was laughing. <laughs> okay, I, some people I, might I, think that was funny. <laughs> I just I just thought I'd ask anyway. <laughs> so we're back on the on the on the regular gallery mode. Anybody else have something they want to share tonight? Well, I got this thing from Amazon, <laughs> of course, that I have deer hair and dubbing and feathers everywhere that I'm not going to keep. So I got this thing right here. See if I can get it in my camera. This is my handy dandy vacuum cleaner. And it's, oh my only, goodness. it's only as big as my hand and I got a little button down here. Uh, is it rechargeable? On. Yes. Excellent. It has Very a plug good. in and it's, it's battery and it has a little plug in. And you just plug it into a USB port. I, the, I, the thank, I thank you so it. much. I have one, Al. Oh, I've, nice. I've shown this in the past. But this is a, it holds glue. So it doesn't, so your bottle doesn't fall over on oh, your desk. Yep. That's yep. a big deal. Love that. Yeah. What is it? Airline sells them. Mm. Yep. It's a piece of foam that's got a, 
a slightly smaller hole than the bottle so that it'll hold the bottle and it just makes a nice big heavy base on the bottle. Cool. cool. And as you can you can tell I get it in front of my face here. It isn't exactly round. <clears throat> and so I have another one for my zappa gap. Mm. And so it's kind of oblong and it fits in there. Oh, works perfectly. Yeah. Do you have hyperlinks on that on your website for that, John? Um, I will. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> go to riverkeeperflies.com, riverkeeperflies.com, and uh, probably will be there for, for you to go wherever on the internet to find it. Walker Bay plastic boat, you know, like, and I've drug it across the bow so many times going across concrete ramps that I finally drug a hole in the very minuscule hmm. hole, but it started to seep. So I bit, bought a can of that. That stuff is seen by Phil, whatever his name is, the TV guy that has this no. spray on rubberized stuff you put in your rain gutters. And uh, you can just spray a coating that on the keel and eventually it'll wear off. But you, then you just go spray another coat on it. So it's pretty handy <laughs> stuff. Just carry around the spray bottle with you. <laughs> uh, that's another one of those things. It's just too darn easy. Uh, going going back to John's uh, solution with the the little foam thing. Well, I, I've basically done the same thing with. Uh, <laughs> oh, look at that. This, this is a noodle that you can get for swimming pool. I got well, one. maybe I should show everybody this light that I had underneath my fly. This is just a. a Did we just freeze? A, it's a magnetic strip light and it's rechargeable. And I got it on Amazon. And um, when I had it underneath my fly, I didn't have it directly laying flat because if I had it flat, it would shine up in my eyes. So I got, I just propped it up so that it was facing away from me like that, so that it wasn't so bright in my eyes. And it worked really nicely to to illuminate the underside of the fly and make the. When you came out to uh, <laughs> Women's Connect last, not last year, the year before, and you gave us those uh, things that you made. Oh, did you make one? I did. And that's good job. And your idea wow, of beautiful. doing the stitching along the edge here. I used it on, on a few things and I just really like it. So I wanted to tell you, thank you. <laughs> oh, you bet. Uh, how cool. Over at Hobby Lobby. And it has blue, yellow, gold, and green, which looks a lot like uh, what you find on the body of fish. And that seems to have made an effective clouser pattern. Uh, and you can see how it's got a very nice shimmer to it. And, and so it's it's just really interesting to play with. And it seems to tie well, too. Yes. That's very good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody well, else? Thank you. Anybody else? Well, let me uh, go back to Spotlight Ness again, and, and I'll do the, uh, the closing comment, and then we can get off the recording and just chat for a minute. Oh, we're still recording? Oh, yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> hey everyone, that's it for this Friday. Thanks so much for joining us. For now it's a wrap until next Friday. <laughs>